have in my pocket. A grain of salt. So I was talking yesterday about one of the aspects, one of the dynamics of the transition of summer bees, of that summer nest into that winter nest. One of those dynamics as being flight and the shift of juvenile hormone within their bodies, which helps promote this, this transition. Just one aspect of all those dynamics going at the same time, right? I'm not trying to exclude the rest of them. The broodlessness period, you know, the, um, the those bees as they're building the fats and protein stores on their bodies, all these things going on all at the same time. One of the aspects that I focused in on yesterday was that seemingly correlation between temperature or lack of flight to the change of juvenile hormone within their bodies, which is directly linked to maybe triggering some of this transition within the, the bee's body. And of course I got rambling on and, and just furthered that thought into some possible management decisions. This is what I do. And, you know, it kind of makes for interesting conversation. I'm not speaking truth. I'm just speaking of how I understand the facts and evidence and information in front of me. So just take this as conversation, right? And I know maybe some of it maybe challenges some of what others believe and observed and kind of go by throughout the years. But a challenge is good in a way which promotes engagement in conversation, which just then helps us understand what's going on a little bit better. So just keep an open mind. And one of those things I want to touch on, I've had, had a lot of comment and engagement from beekeepers telling me if I move my colonies in a couple weeks earlier, it's actually going to be bad for my bees because then they don't get the opportunity for a potential late fall cleansing flight. I used to subscribe to that same train of thought. But I've kind of strayed away from that now, just kind of questioning the importance of that late fall winter flight. I'll try to dig up a graph from Lloyd to explain what I'm kind of speaking on here. But when you look at that winter cluster as it sets itself up and when that cluster meets that inflection point where those bees turn long-lived, right? Those winter bees. That winter cluster is full of a demographic of different age structures, all the same. They're, they've become long-lived bees, but there's still that demographic of younger to older bees within that long-lived nest. So within the age structure of that cluster itself, I think that tells us a lot of what we're seeing of our colony behavior fall, winter, and into spring. My argument is... What exactly is the importance of that late fall cleansing flight to the cluster? Is it actually beneficial? As we see it as beekeepers, we don't see an age structure in there. We just see a mass of bees. We experience a sunny day. We see them flying and pooping with, oh boy, that must be good. But in the middle of October, when you have that cluster set up, Which are the bees that are actually flying in the fall, that late flight period? Which are the bees that are actually flying? My argument is those bees are old bees. And those are the bees that we generally will find on the floor in January. So are they actually, by them getting up and flying, is it actually doing any real benefit 
to the overall health of the cluster by getting up and flying. I would say, I don't know. From time to time, I'll dump a colony on the ground just because shit happens and, you know, there's a colony that got accidentally spilled off the truck on the ground. And you'll notice that there'll be a little bit of flight. But for the most part, the bees in the grass, they're just walking around. They're not flying. You put a box over top of them, they'll crawl into the box. But they're not going to fly back to the location that you just pulled them from. Those are the little winter bees. Those are the flightless little winter bees. Those are the bees that are going to get you from October to March to April. And I'll even argue in the spring when I talk about this, the first flight and the awe-inspiring spectacle of bees up in the air and flying. There's a certain demographic within that cluster is up and flying. They're not all up and flying. Otherwise, I'd see just a complete mess of drift within the yard. You'll notice in a springtime nest that is getting up and flying, there's a lot of bees that get up and flying. You crack the lid and there's a lot of bees. They're just staying put, holding themselves over that newly established brood nest. It's that same demographic, I believe, of age structure within that wintering cluster. The older bees are the ones getting up and flying. Those are the ones that are going to go out and forage and bring that resource in. That younger demographic is going to hold tight and rear that brood nest. The flightless bees, right? So that's kind of the way I look at this graph, <clears throat> the age structure of that wintering nest and the way I observe all these behaviors, this is the way I'm understanding it. Is it true? I'm not exactly sure, but this is the way I'm seeing it. So like a grain of salt, take it for what it's worth. <clears throat> but I don't think I'm too far off. So what I'm gonna do is I have the winter shed set up here. And my rental shop has like a one or two ton refrigeration unit. I think I'm going to bring a couple yards into the winter shed here next week. Try to keep them cool. And if I can't, if it gets too warm, then I'll just bring them back out because it's just two yards. Maybe I'll bring a truckload in. I'll bring some of my most awkward yards in maybe. Set them into the shop, middle of October, and just see if I see a huge detriment by bringing them in just a couple weeks earlier. I'd say not. And I'd say they might actually see benefit.